we are in the rainforest in Tobago, main rich rainforest. Did I say it right? Yeah. Finally, I'm learning where I am. Mm -hmm. That's a good sign. It's so I can leave you here, right? Uh, not yet, please. <laughs> I do appreciate the guidance here. <laughs> I'm almost at home, but not so at home. <laughs> it's, uh, it's my second time here. I was last time uh, one and a half year ago in daytime. So it's quite interesting to see nighttime what's going on. Uh, seeing all the forest crabs, uh, whip tails, scorpions, scorpions. Uh, trapdoor, spiders. Uh, listening all the tree frogs and cicados, cicados and uh, seeing a lot of uh, pachaks crossing the roads all over and seeing uh, their house doors. Um, it's a quite a privilege, it's strong energy here. Uh, I've been dreaming of this trip actually two years, so it feels awesome to be finally in the rainforest at night time extremely awesome once in a lifetime experience well hopefully maybe more but feels like something worth trying definitely recommend to everyone to take this kind of trips and same same time i feel that it's part of the ecotourism and uh, showing what's what's going on in the real nature and not like uh, just party party really cool experience you were saying um earlier tonight when you told when you said to your yeah, friends. You were coming to the rainforest, they thought you were going to... Yeah, everyone was asking where is that disco, where is that nightclub? And when I said that, no, it's tall trees and uh, a lot of wildlife, they still didn't get it. They still were asking what street corner is that disco. So they, when they finally started realizing that I'm coming to rainforest, and for real, <laughs> they started looking like, whoa, what's going on? Are you, are you okay? Are you crazy? <laughs> But this is really like uh, one of the coolest things I've done in this trip, at least. So. Well, yeah, you mentioned cool and... Um, but it's calm, and even though I'm fully eaten by mosquitoes from before of this trip, I haven't got any mosquito bites so far, new at least. And I haven't really seen many mosquitoes either, so it's interesting. I could really move in here, like uh, have my hammock here and sleep over. Maybe next trip. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we had the bats, didn't we? We had the um, insect-eating bats. Oh, um, yeah, and that's really fascinating. That's We've been this close to each other, and the bats mm -hmm. are actually flying between us, but they mm -hmm. come very close here. It's yeah. uh, awesome. Gives you an idea of um, how they play, how well they perform their ecological role. Mm. Um, insect-eating bats, you know. Mm. Uh, and it's you mentioned cool. It's, it's the temperature, and also... It's just cool to be in the rainforest at night and, um, you know, your mind, your body and your soul seems to connect with, with nature. Mm. Um, listen to the songs. Scream. And then the crickets. Not many cicadas tree frogs you know these um these tapes that you get relaxation tapes mm -hmm. yeah i'm a big fan this of is, those yeah this is the perfect perfect um i can imagine how um interesting these songs can revive the body, the soul and the mind. Mm. I never thought I would have done this though. I mean, if we take that light off, it's just really dark. Mm -hmm. And um, as a child growing up, I never believed that I would have been in a place like this. I was afraid of the dark, but I don't know where that fear went. Mm. You know, it's just come... It has come naturally, mm. and um, I actually like walking mm. in the forest during the night. Um, yeah, you seem to find all the all the wildlife signs very easy, but it's, it's a lot of uh, like opossums we haven't seen now. You told me that before. There used to be more. People yeah. still do hunting in these areas, even though they're not supposed to do that. And 
It's, yeah, uh, culturally, um, hunting is one of the things that came from our ancestors, mm -hmm. and of course the early um, the indigenous or our indig indigenous peoples, the Caribs and Arawak Indians, Amer Indians, they were hunters, gatherers. Mm -hmm. But in those days, there used to be a lot more wildlife, a lot more forest, mm -hmm. um, which there would have been a balance because, you know, and they would have practiced um, sustainability in terms of their, how they would have hunted mm -hmm. um, the wildlife. Um, Are people using traps or they actually physically hunt them with guns or...? A combination of um, things are used, uh, air rifles, mm. traps, hunting dogs, you know, uh, various methods. I mean, it gives the animals virtually no chance, really. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's not so big island anyway, and the rain the rainforest is not so large area after all, like... It's, it's yeah. kind of big, but it's not so big, like... Uh, well, it creates an imbalance because mm. um, smaller islands, species decline... Faster. Much faster, because mm. the population numbers are very low. How about then, like, I, I, I haven't seen much cats out, like normal domesticated cats, but the ones I've seen, they're very small. Are they damaging the birds and stuff here? Um, like there is not so big cat population of cats. No, Dogs I don't I think there's a more. significant um, impact from the cats on the bird population. Okay. I don't think so. Um, in my view, I think um, the actual deforestation, habitat loss. Mm. So habitat loss results in a lack of food mm. or decline in and um, a lack of food would result in a mm. decline in species because they can't rear their young mm. uh, and so on. So I think it's important, it's a, such an important topic, um, the animal's ecological role in the ecosystem. Mm. Earlier I read um, that there's like 26 different type of snakes in Tobago. Uh, uh, is there still or is there a problem? You mentioned that a lot of people kill them even though if they are not close to the housing. And yeah, we should have approximately... But what is the reason of killing when they are not dangerous at all here? I think it's all... Fear of It has slithering. to do with the way how we... How we... Well, you know, a lack of education on on snakes, um, fear of snakes. Mm. Maybe going back to the um, to the Bible, mm. some people think that the serpent, you know, every snake that you see is the serpent that was referred to. Mm. That's just a thought. Well, that's just really I'm not, sad. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not um, educated enough Spe to talk. Especially, especially when they are on not that. dangerous on this island. Like yeah. that. I just but feel yeah. like I found like a real paradise. Like sna even the snakes are not dangerous. It's like a yeah. Well, yeah. We are supposed to have at least twenty four species um, recorded, okay. and um, one of them in particular is uh, called uh, a mock coral. Mm -hmm. And it has the bands. It's red and black. The bands are rounded, and they don't have the white as the the real coral snake that is found on our sister island Trinidad and also um, further south and Central America. Mm. But that particular snake has been studied uh, as recently as as um, 18 months ago. I have actually collected uh, specimen at least one specimen and they have actually been studying the snake tissue samples and fang samples from the fang and so on has proved so far that the snake is non-poisonous mm. um, but that snake is killed on site 
mm. you know well even more so than the other species mm. that most snakes are killed unfortunately unfortunately on site um, mm. there's a small percentage of the population that is now getting more aware mm. but oftentimes you see a snake run over on the main ridge road mm. and it's nowhere near where anybody lives mm. so why even though you are afraid of of the yeah, reptile well, we are visiting their environment so they should be free to room yeah well this is their home uh, we are actually invading their mm. territory so but the point is that whether people think that we you know this snake is not anywhere near where i live so I may as well give it a chance. Mm. And when you consider the, the fact that they, they control so much of what we cannot, uh, you know, vermins mm. and so on, their, their role in the ecology mm. is extremely important. And, um, you know, let's look at it from a different perspective. Mm. All right. Um, but I guess. What is really needed? There goes that bat mm -hmm. controlling the it, the insects. So yeah, I think it's just about over the camera need, edge, but it's yeah. uh, it's between us anyway. We don't need insect repellent because the bats are controlling the insects, mm -hmm. so not a problem. Yeah, I think the reason they were actually in front of me because the flashlight was on my forehead, yeah, and yeah. there is some moths or something in the there, Attractive. and they just go straight in front of yeah. my nose. So yeah, I think um, getting back to that. Topic, I think environmental education is what is lacking. Is lacking in yeah. mm. um, I would actually like to start doing something, um, an awareness, an environmental or a wildlife awareness um, program. Mm. Maybe I'm still about five years away from doing that because I need to study some of it a bit more. Mm. But I think that would be um, quite interesting. I think so. It's uh, you know? The little time that I've been using in Tobago, I just see that it's a lot of beautiful nature and a lot of potential, much more than it's used. Especially when it comes for like fishermen killing the turtles and stuff like... Yeah. Oh, ouch! <laughs> of course, it's a hot uh, topic for the locals too, but... They would make so much more money if the ecotourism comes here more and pays for seeing the turtles alive. And well, yeah, of I mean, course, there is a big part of ecotourism already happening like that, but it's the rest of the population don't understand the whole concept of preserving the nature. It's, uh, why kill the goose that lays the golden egg? Exactly. A living animal is worth much more than a dead one. Mm. Turtles, you know, turtles, it's one of the biggest um, ecological, um, in terms of tours, ecology tours that you can find anywhere in the world. Mm. And um, we are extremely fortunate to have um, an endangered species like leatherbacks mm. and hawksbills. Mm. you know nesting on our beaches but again it comes back to that old culture that I I, I honestly think that it's, it's changing slowly mm. yeah yeah I had privilege last time to see giant letter back lay eggs yeah whoa it was extremely privileged yeah. moment to see them mm -hmm. I was shocked how big they are. Like I, I had seen some pictures, but I didn't really imagine in my head that I would seen fit six it. times in that shell. Like <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a seen big, it in natural. big mama really laying mm. eggs. Like a beautiful. Yeah. Mm. But you're doing great job at least, like educating. Like it's been a privileged evening here to yeah. find out these things. And yeah, I, I'm really shocked still about the scorpions. Like how smoothly yeah. you took them in the hand. Like. Well, I, cool? I, I would like to get a Cook's tree board, that's why I have my snake stick. Okay. So. Alright, we'll see if we find some crossed. snakes later on still. And. Nine banded armadillo is such a cute animal to see. 
Mm -hmm. Sometimes along the trail here we see them. Mm -hmm. They're very clumsy, the way how they they walk. Okay. They sort of they have a lot. Of, so that's of, why they are also easy to hunt. Yeah. So jump. it's like a lousy hunter's target. Yeah, I think it's so. Mm. Yeah. Just to give a little bit additive for the hunters. Do you I don't know, like um, hunting. Do you know armadillos? <laughs> it's one of the only animals that actually carries the virus that causes Parkinson's disease. Oh. Leprosy disease. No, I didn't know. Yeah, it is, yeah. So then hunting those can actually spread disease too. But some people find them extremely tasty. Okay. Hmm. So. Well, I'm um, not going to taste them anyway, so. Yeah. I don't, I don't think the wild meat is I do so believe good wild me. animals must have um, to ex to survive in, in a wild environment they they have you know they are they are designed created with, with different things you know mm. bacteria and stuff like that so that they can survive in this environment mm. it's like some of these plants you know they are related to some of the plants we have in our garden at home mm. but they are the wild specimens and they are much tougher mm. because you have the real predators you know it's mm. not like the soft mm. plants that we have well even the toughest can be eaten by the pachaks here <laughs> oh yeah they <laughs> it's a lot of pachaks damage this time I special think. adaptations yeah mm. Is there something happened between like one and a half year? Because one and a half year ago I didn't see any pachaks. Now I have them over on the gate of my guest house and here we passed them. There's been many paths of uh, pachaks and... Is there more of them now lately? Or oh, they always been? I just didn't see them. I know that they, they have always been. But what we are sure of is that we have less forested areas especially in the area where your guest house is mm -hmm. so if you have less trees so they come to garden they would come mm. is there any way to protect the garden from them actually someone says project bait but the uh, others say that that doesn't really work so yeah. they're just going to clean up the garden that's it they're going to but um they do use you know different methods of keeping them away um, the bachak bait and stuff like that chemicals mm. you know yeah. I like to see them work though mm. yeah I like to see them but yeah, if you're into part if, of the ecosystem yeah so. but I guess if you are into Gardening, plants mm. yeah yeah if you're it's the human animal conflict again then you you love your plants and you wouldn't want to see the um, them you wouldn't want to see them eaten by these leaf cutters Atasiphalotis mm -hmm. Atas species yeah so yeah you do also like a swim like snorkeling tours or something yeah I do um, is it what what kind of things you can find in the oceans then around? Well, the reefs around Tobago, coral reef system is actually one of the most diverse marine ecosystems on the planet, and um, Tobago's waters are fed from a nutrients point of view. Um, from the South American rivers, okay. you know, the Orinoco. Mm -hmm. So um, the corals and the fishes, mainly corals and fishes, you know, a variety of um, hard and soft corals, parrot fishes, and many different species. So that's basically um, what you can see on the, um, the snorkeling trips. Uh, or the reefs. Mm. When I remember now on the beach there was a little boy and he mm -hmm. he dived some coral piece 
-hmm. and started eating it and was trying to get me to bite it and saying, no, no, the vegans eat this coral stone. Is that right or is it bullshit? <laughs> well, I've, I've never really come across that, um, but... I, I didn't only, bite for it. Only on, <laughs> was it um, a few days ago, somebody gave me a piece of, part of a coconut to eat. And, you know, not a coconut bread, you know, it's, you have a, a fairly young coconut without jelly, just the water. Mm -hmm. And then you eat the inside of that. Mm. <laughs> it's interesting. So, there you go. You, the more you live, the more you learn. You know, um, I've never known that before, so... So it's like a little bit more than raw Maybe coconut. there's there's some coral out there that they eat. Mm. <laughs> At least a little boy was trying to eat it, like, happily. <laughs> yeah, but I would think that maybe that's a bit too ambitious, though. Mm -hmm. Eating coral. I appreciate my teeth. <laughs> Unless you are parrot fish. Exactly. <laughs> then I watch my fingers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's continue trying yeah. to find some snakes. I'll try to get my headlights back.